The treatment of returning World War II Latino veterans sparked an increasing discontent within the Latino community. After their military service in World War II, Latino veterans returned home to an unchanged United States full of discrimination and violence. Even after sacrificing their lives and serving side by side with their white counterparts in front lines of war, Latinos continued to be treated as second class citizens. In an affidavit written in 1945, Veteran David Rodriguez recounted his frustration with police indifference towards Latino concerns. Rodriguez describes his futile plea to police officials after having been denied service at a local barbershop that only served to white customers. An officer quickly told Rodriguez that he could not do anything about it for the reason that he was now a civilian and was wearing civilian clothes. This instance of segregation highlights the broader trend of racial tensions and discriminatory practices in the United States directed at Latinos after the war. As a result of this discontent produced by U.S.'s ambivalence towards Latino civil rights, a new political fervor began to arise, spearheaded by Latino veterans. Unequal treatment of Latinos in the U.S. did not begin with World War II. Throughout U.S. history, public schools in areas of the U.S. with large Latino populations were segregated. Latino children attended schools that received less funding, and provided children with fewer resources, while Euro-American children attended separate, better-funded schools. Several Latino organizations were already fighting against the system before World War II. One of these groups, the League of United Latin American Citizens, also known as LULAC, had pushed for desegregation of public schools and for legal recognition of equal status for Latinos since 1929. Another organization, La Liga Pro Defensa Escolar, focused on improving the facilities and educations that students in Mexican schools in working class communities received. Before the war, it was dangerous to be involved in these types of organizations. U.S. Border Patrol agents often deported Latinos they thought were politically dangerous, even if they were U.S. citizens. These images show groups of Latino Americans on their way to be repatriated to Mexico. At first, this scared a lot of Latinos out of participating, but when Latino veterans returned from the war, they were not as easy to intimidate. One LULAC organizer wrote that the fact that we comprised one-ninth of the population and were getting one-third of the Medals of Honor became a rallying cry for Latinos and showed we were not traitors. Both groups flourished. This photograph from the LULAC National Convention in 1951 shows how their numbers grew. LULAC won numerous court cases challenging segregation, and La Liga convinced legislators to provide Latino schools with additional resources. In addition to reshaping existing groups, returning veterans formed new political organizations like the GI Forum. Under the leadership of Dr. Hector Garcia, a veteran himself, the GI Forum sought to provide returning veterans immediate support and to address other concerns of the Mexican-American community. As a result, it was able to extend benefits such as education, employment, and loan offerings to minority veterans. The Longoria Affair of 1949 elevated the GI Forum to the national stage. After the Three Rivers Funeral Home denied funeral service for Felix Longoria Jr., Garcia and the GI Forum fought to right this wrong. Garcia and the GI Forum used the media to pressure opposing legislators into giving Longoria a proper funeral. He telegrammed members of the Texas state and federal legislatures to garner support from various political figures. Garcia's dedication, patience, and ability to connect with people were driving forces behind the victory and unity among Latino Americans. The generation of Latino veterans returning from World War II initiated an era of Latino activism unprecedented in its scope and success. Their military training, their experiences serving in mixed battalions during the war, and their diverse but largely consistent encounters with discrimination upon their return all contributed to expanded activism, both in existing groups and in new groups like the GI Forum. Although veteran involvement in these political organizations did not get rid of discrimination against Latinos as many had hoped, it absorbed many Latino civilians into the political sphere, empowering the Latino movement. This newfound political activism set the foundation for the labor movements, prominent grassroots leaders and organizations which would arise in the 1960s.